For the first time ever, we're going to test a cellular network on the moon. So this is gonna be a 4G LTE system. We're extremely excited. It enhances the technical capabilities of what we expect to be able to do with communications. We built the first cellular network on the moon. We built it, we deployed it, and we operate it to support the scientific experiments and the payloads that are part of the M2 mission. So our current baseline, uh, it limits us to about two kilometers in terms of how far we can communicate with the astronauts uh, from the lander. What we really want to do is extend that range to as maximum as possible. And this technology allows us to do that. The communication network has several components. The first one and the main part is the Nokia Bell Apps network. We call it network in the box. It's a highly integrated, optimized cellular network. Then there is the communication equipment that goes into the payloads. That's the equivalent of your smartphone. Every couple years, there's a call that goes out to commercial industry. One of them is what we call tipping point, is we're looking for new technologies that are on the verge of really enabling new science and exploration missions. They just need a chance to, to prove themselves, let's say in space, on the lunar surface, et cetera, so that other mission managers and scientists can see this technology and say, this is real. With the NASA tipping point, we're really trying to demonstrate and validate the technology, and this is part of the Intuitive Machines 2 mission. We had started thinking about taking cellular technology into space, and then we came across the tipping point program, and we thought it would be a great opportunity for us to apply and see if the technologies that we were working on and the vision and ambition we had about taking cellular technologies to space, if that would resonate with NASA. We needed to get on an actual mission apply the technology to advance the technology readiness, and the tipping point seemed to be exactly the program that would allow us to do that. When we can partner with commercial industry, where we can take the great technology developed here on Earth and apply them on the lunar surface, or at Mars, or deeper out in space, that benefits everybody. It benefits the commercial companies, it benefits NASA, it benefits the human race. The first communication satellite was Telstar 1 in 1962, which really allowed communication and transmission of voice, data, images, and broadcast TV across the Atlantic. And subsequently, we were part of program Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. We're very excited to continue that journey of working with space industry and bring the technologies that we develop to support future exploration.